Where is Steve? Bingzok looked first at the pair of Terran hands that had appeared suddenly on his desk. Then he tilted back so he could take in the rest of the disheveled Deathworlder. He slowly swiveled one eye, relaxing slightly as he noticed his door was still in one piece. Whatever had happened, the terrifying Terran was not mad at him, at least. Engineer Joshette. This is hardly... Steve, where is he? Bingzok pondered for a moment. I don't think we have any crew member named Steve. Joshette sat down, staring at Bingzok. Her face, he noticed, had a similar hue as it had when she had after lifting something in the engine bay that was heavy even for her overbuilt physique. Steve isn't a crew member. Ah, Bingzok said, then added, I've had no reports that any of your menagerie have gotten loose from the pens. Both bubbles and cuddles are fine, Joshette interrupted. Bingzok barely suppressed a nervous wiggle. The creature the Terran in front of him insisted on calling Bubbles had severely wounded three of his security teams before the Death Welder had calmly walked up to it and booped its nose. One of its noses, Bingzok corrected himself, and it had calmed the beast down. As for cuddles, best not to think about. The creature looked harmless, but there was a kill on sight order for the species. Ah, so this Steve isn't a new pet, then? No, more of an old acquaintance, and I want to know where he is. Bingzok pondered. Humans, he recalled, gave names to a lot of things that didn't need them. Er, uh, I don't think anyone has been to the armory. Betty, Rosie, Boomer, Baby, Thumper, Daisy, Lil Slicer, Old Betsy, Sparky, Molly, and Little Miss Sunshine are likely fine. Especially after what happened last time. But none of them are Steve, and Steve wouldn't be in the armory. And I assure you, Joshette, that none would touch your tool locker. Joshette glowered. No, they damn well wouldn't, but I don't keep my... Steve wouldn't be there. I see. So where would Steve be? Steve should be in my quarters, but he ain't. But your quarter is RNA locked. No one can get into your quarter. Well... Apart from software maintainer Dave, that is. The neck beard? How can he get past an RNA lock? You have to realize, Joshette, the Terrans are remarkably similar in their genetic markup by ship security standards. What you consider a big genetic difference is little more than a reader error for a system that can differentiate between 17 species. Has he been in my quarters? Bingzok looked down at his desk, then typed a query into it. The system can't tell. One Terran is very much like a second. Joshette glowered. There is a Tri-D pickup down the hall from my... Recordings can only be released to the insurance company after a pirate. Show me! There are lives at stake. Steve? No, Neckbeard, show me. Bingzok hesitated. A part of him wanted to make an excuse and let Joshette access the files herself, but the thought of fingers that could bend hull plates tapping on his smart desk was too much to bear. He tapped in a few commands, then waited as the computer looked through the feed looking for motion. The flickering hologram steadied. In miniature, a small biped figure stepped out of the door to Joshette's quarters, carrying something. Bingzok looked up as he heard Joshette's sharp intake of breath, then shuddered as she went through his door without bothering to let it dilate first. Bingzok reached out with a trembling tendril and made two calls. The first one to engineering to have a tech replace his door. The other to the medical team, to know one or perhaps two Terrans, were likely to need attention later.